you're on board the International Space Station, drinking a nice cup of tea, when suddenly bang, there's a massive explosion, and the airlock pops open, and you're fired off out into space without any protective clothing. So, how long could you survive in space without a spacesuit to protect you from the harsh environment of space? And what could you do to try and improve your odds of surviving? So space isn't a very nice place. That's why it's nearly impossible for life to survive up there. There's no oxygen, you're inside a giant vacuum, it's freezing cold, and there's billions of tiny meteoroids flying around you that could kill you at any time. There's a reason that the only thing we know that can survive in space are these weird creatures. NASA and other space agencies have spent billions of pounds designing spacesuits able to protect astronauts from the harsh environments of space. But what if you weren't lucky enough to be wearing a spacesuit? What would happen to you? The first thing that's going to cause you a problem is the lack of oxygen. Because space is a vacuum, there isn't any air up there for you to breathe. So your best bet would be to hold your breath until you get rescued, right? Well, actually, no. Because space is a vacuum, it's much lower pressure in space than it is down here on Earth because there's no air. And this causes the air in your lungs to expand when you're in space without a spacesuit on. And just like a balloon, if your lungs expand too much, so the first thing you want to do is get rid of all the air in your lungs. But without oxygen, you're soon going to pass out. So, unless you get help within the first 15 seconds, you're going to go unconscious. And this was just the case for a lab technician in 1965, who accidentally depressurized his suit in a vacuum chamber down here on Earth. After around 15 seconds of no air, he passed out. Luckily, they managed to repressurize his suit about 10 seconds later and he regained consciousness. He made a full recovery, but strangely, he lost the sense of taste for two weeks afterwards. Now, at this point, you're not going to be able to do much for yourself. You're really going to be relying on someone coming to rescue you. The human body can last around three minutes without oxygen before any permanent damage is done. But getting help and rescue in space is a bit easier said than done. And while you're unconscious, being in a vacuum is going to have another strange effect on your body. You see, the temperature needed to boil liquids depends on the pressure around them. And what this means is that up in space, where there is no pressure, liquids can boil at a very, very low temperature. Now you can see this effect for yourself. The water boils at a much lower temperature at the top of a mountain than it does down here on sea level. But in space, just your body temperature can actually boil off water. This means that the blood in your body is going to boil. Unsurprisingly, this really isn't a good thing. Any dissolved gases in your body are going to turn back into gases and create small bubbles in your blood vessels. These bubbles can then block the flow of blood, which can cause some really serious problems. Thankfully, one thing that won't happen to you is that your body won't explode. Despite what you see in movies, when your body is exposed to the low pressure vacuum environment of space, your body doesn't explode. Sure, your eyes, your skin, and your organs will all expand slightly, but never enough to explode, other than your lungs, which contain lots of air. Now, if all the liquid in your body hadn't already boiled off, and you hadn't turned unconscious, you start to notice that things get a little bit cold. That's because in space there's no air to keep in the sun's heat like there is down here on Earth. This causes the temperature in space to go several hundred degrees below freezing. At this point, your body's going to start to freeze. However, because there's no longer an atmosphere, you're going to feel a lot more of the sun's energy on you. And this is going to cause the side of your body facing towards the sun to heat up. This is a real big problem in the International Space Station, where any component facing towards the sun on it can be heated to several hundreds of degrees, which can be a real problem for astronauts who have to work on the outside of it. So one side of you is going to be superheated by the sun, the other side of you is going to be frozen cold by space. It's going to be a rather unpleasant feeling. So your dead, half-frozen, half-cooked, liquidless body is now floating around in space. Lovely. So what happens next? Well, even though you're in space, at the height of the International Space Station above the Earth, you're actually still slightly within the Earth's atmosphere. And what this means is that as you orbit around the Earth, you're actually going to feel some air resistance from the Earth's atmosphere. Now, this effect causes the International Space Station to gradually fall closer and closer towards the Earth. Rockets and shuttles actually have to push the International Space Station regularly into a higher orbit away from the Earth. You, however, won't have this luxury, so you will eventually fall down to Earth. Of course, most of you is going to burn up in the atmosphere, but some of you might make it back to the surface. So it's pretty difficult to survive in space. You might be able to last a few minutes if you're lucky and someone comes and rescues you. 
But the good news is your body isn't going to explode like it does in the movies. So I guess that's some kind of consolation. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the rest of my channel for some great science videos. And why not leave a comment below? Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all soon.